welcome to the idyllic writers show so welcome to the first episode of my show which i'm going to run parallelly with my blog so this is basically to support all uh, the content on my blog so all the content creators are going to come here talk about all the stuff they've written and uh, we're basically going to discuss as a community uh, which is the main objective of my blog so the main uh, motive and the main vision behind this blog and this podcast uh, is to create a naturally growing and organic community of people who who just want to express their thoughts and probably don't have a platform to do so so this is the pilot episode of that podcast of the show so and today we are going to be speaking on a very crucial uh, topic uh, which is very relevant to our country and also to the youth we are going to be speaking about the economic conditions of our country and also the stock market and other relevant things and we are going to correlate it with the current coronavirus crisis going on so let me introduce myself i am shake imran i'll be your host uh, and for today's episode we have a very special guest a very good fr- friend of mine we have russell fernandez he's a business student from christ so hi russell hi imran nice to meet you thank you for having me over here thank you so much for coming to my show so and you know the like today's topic right you know what what we are going to talk today oh yes yes i have received the talk okay before we get into that i would like to go over the mnemonics of my blog's name right you know how we had a bio teacher right who always used to talk about mnemonics oh yeah yeah and and why it is a uh, best way to learn about things or meanings of things mm-hmm. so going over the mnemonics uh, of my blog or my podcast so the name is the idyllic scribblers so idyllic is basically like happy or expressive mm-hmm. broadly speaking so that's idyllic and scribblers is just a fancy way of writing writers so that is why uh, i went with the name idyllic scribblers i found it relative uh, relevant to our you know main vision and aim so and i already told you about the objective and what our blog is about so that was something about the idyllic scribblers blog and the idyllic scribblers show and you'll be getting more content soon we'll have more exciting speakers writers on the show and uh, blog as well so coming to today's podcast so as i said earlier we're going to talk about economy we're going to talk about market we're also going to touch upon corruption we're also going to correlate all of this with corona virus and how it is affecting Uh, all these form of parameters so since rasul you are a business student right mm-hmm. so i wanted to like ask you before we start can you like if you could tell us about the current scenario of the indian economy like in short i know there's a lot to talk about this and uh, and it's a really uh, uh, you know sensitive issue uh, a topic and requires lot of expert and uh, you know other specialized people working in this field or to give their opinion upon there are a lot of analysts talking about this every day screaming on the news channels and everywhere <laughs> so if you could give us or tell us in short what the scenario of the current economy is talking about the indian economy so what would you say so i'm going to keep it really brief cause uh, after studying economics i just realized how in depth a lot of things are how there's various factors which influence things some that you can see and some that you cannot so mm-hmm. there there was this report recently by the un trade it was a un trade report and based on the report post corona virus crisis pretty much all of the world's economies are going going to go into a recession a recession is mm-hmm. basically a negative gdp growth continuously for two quarters which is about 6 months with the only right. exception of india and china even though they might not be facing a recession they would have a slowdown all right that's an interesting report and i've been i read about these things as well there's a lot of analysts that are coming out and talking about the economy slowing down and also india and china would be unharmed or unaffected in this well so, it's not that, okay it's not that they would be unaffected it's more that relative okay. compared to all other countries out there they would be the ones least affected but nevertheless they would okay they would be the ones least affected okay yeah absolutely okay all right so that's the analysis all that's the talk of the town right now 
एंड इफ आई हैड टू आस्क यू टू कंपेयर लाइक इंडिया बिफोर द कोरोना वायरस और द इकोनॉमी ऑफ इंडिया बिफोर द कोरोना वायरस Mm-hmm. and after the corona virus because i guess it's been one quarter right it's been 3 months since we've been uh, watching or closely studying this economic shutdowns and economic slowdowns market crashing mm-hmm. so if you're talking about the indian market so what would you say like comparing it with last year's economy 2019 the last quarter mm-hmm. and year's first quarter so uh, because this year's first quarter was affected by corona virus and there were a lot of shutdowns mm-hmm. uh, the manufacturing industry was shut so what would you say like do you see any uh, you know change or if uh, speaking statistically do you see any difference in the growth curves or because i've been reading a lot about you know this v shaped graphs uh, so what v shaped graph because i've been reading an article a uh, lot of analysts from united nations trade and a uh, lot of cnn people from cnn they say like uh, countries are showing a v shaped curve or the slow down pattern so it is like the projected curve and the current curve mm. is like has a drastic change so basically it has formed a v shape on the graph so it basically signifies the slow down i'm, so, I'm and- not really familiar with the v shaped graph all right all right because i i was checking few figures but it is slightly different with india's economy right it does not show that pattern or china mm-hmm. and that might be one of the reasons why uh, we might not see a proper recession mm-hmm. right so what would you say or how would you compare like india before corona and after corona the indian economy well certainly there would be a slowdown there was already a slowdown happening in fact this corona was like a godsend thing for us cause mm. cause uh, the economy was already in such bad shape i wouldn't say it was horrible but it was in such a bad shape so this was like that final nail in the coffin that final straw it's like that final push you you always need to sometimes hit rock bottom so you can bounce right up yeah so in, yeah. in in fact there's no other better country to be born in than india right now cause according to the forecast ex- with the exception of india and china majority of the world is going to be in a recession and also you're going to see a lot of governments coming out with uh, stimulus packages where they pump in money into the economy right after the yeah. crisis so yeah. which means it's going to be actually a good time to have your own startup because interest rates are going to go down really low or it might all even hit zero at times so when interest rates go down you get loans much easily so the startup environment is going to be really well okay that's interesting and actually i was going to speak about this later on so we'll be going to that topic once again mm-hmm. so you say we have been already facing a market slowdown mm-hmm. and uh, res- and you know our market has been crashing and and we are about to hit the rock bottom just to bounce back that is what you've been saying right mm-hmm. so this was about the economy so when now if you're talking about the stock market mm-hmm. so like if would you like to say something about the stock market indian stock market or the basics well the indian stock market has been quite optimistic during this corona period it it took a while for it to catch on with the international markets as in it crashed pretty late if you ask me because i was trading the market back in january february march so when wall street was crashing and all india was still relatively fine in fact uh, i believe i i had uh, some shares invested in this company called trent it's a subsidiary right. it's a subsidiary of tata all right, so all right. that's interesting I'm making like huge profits and i'm not kidding like uh, when they announced uh, the previous quarter's results my share price has jumped so i made so much money it was early late january i believe so that was sort of the time when corona started popping and it was on a bull run all the way till the end of february so while other markets were crashing indian markets were still going up i mean not really up but they were pretty steady it took quite some time for them to actually catch on with the world market so you've been saying that the indian market is relatively stable even in times of crisis and even in times of slowdowns oh no no, so no. What, I, what i'm saying is that while uh, worldwide stock markets have been crashing the indian okay. market took a couple of days or maybe a week is supposed to actually crash 
so they were pretty right. but once it did crash then no uh, it was just like any other market all right so basically all over the world it's like a chain reaction so once the main thing crashes so everything associated gets crashes hmm. but india differs in that right it delays yeah so it took a it while crashed. for indian took a while to crash all right so since we're seeing a similar situation right now because there's analysts talking about recession and stuff and if i were to invest so would you suggest an investor to invest right now in this situation in this market environment in stocks and uh, other commodities so the way we value companies and businesses by the method of discounting so you might be all familiar right. of compounding right you might have studied compound interest and all yeah 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 i have i have yeah so discounting is pretty much the exact same thing but in reverse so you oh, right. so you look at the company in like 5 to 10 years into the future and you see what's the value of it and then you have okay. like a, a percentage sort of number there's many ways you okay. dis- you get that number but then you take this future value of the company and apply this uh, percentage that you have in mind again different people have different ways of getting that percentage i believe it's called irr so you use that to discount the value and get a okay. present present value of that company and all right and if this, the market price of the company is below that present value that means you should invest and if it's higher then you don't so all right now since this corona virus thing hit so the future value of these companies have taken a massive hit because it's uncertain if the company will survive or not yeah so which is why you see all all these markets crashing and okay. and many people might need money in the short term for other purposes hence they like uh, uh they're compelled to pull money out of the market and other people just pull it out because everyone's pulling out so yeah in fact now is one of the best times to actually invest into the stock market because everything's on a huge discount everything's okay. so so affordable but uh, there's so- there's one problem though cause so what is that the, the corona virus uh, crisis is not something that we've seen happen before it's it's very yeah, different exactly. for example uh, the spanish flu in the early 2000s i suppose i don't remember when the year was no it was much earlier i guess okay, i don't remember but there was this other epidemic also we stop okay there was sars there was sars in 2003 yeah, oh, yeah. so i guess that sars is- i believe so yeah so usually whenever there's such a market crash for example the 2008 crash it's actually a good yeah. time to invest in companies cause everything's on discount and then within a couple of years they bounce back up but the corona okay. this is a unique case cause it's it's happening when this world is interconnected like all countries are connected so deeply which is why the effects have been so wild Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of uncertainty if markets will be able to bounce back or if they do bounce back how long it will take but otherwise generally speaking whenever there's a crisis and prices are falling it's actually one of the best times to get in the market so what do you suggest is to like jump on the hype train and like go for stocks start investing and this is the best time to experiment and maybe make some big mm-hmm. cash right mm mm-hmm. Although so that is what you've been trying to say. Although you have to be patient with it. Yeah, of course. That is yeah. That is one thing about stocks. You have to be patient. It's not like you put in money and you get money back or you increase your money, right? Yeah, and uh, since India is in its early stages, you you mm-hmm. really can't predict how things will go on the 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 near future, like what happens next week. So I think okay. it's a good time to put money in the market now. But timing it is your headache. Cause, okay uh, again as i said it's just in the early stages it hasn't gotten really worse in india yet we don't know if we'll be able to control it or not if we are able to control yeah. it properly then it's it's good news but in case not then things could take a toll that's 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 an interesting thing and and i had another question mm-hmm. so do you think this current crisis will cause an inequality gap or or it will widen the current inequality gap mm, that's a good question so it can go either way 
Because mm-hmm. first of all, uh, maybe the inequality gap could widen because mostly people who already have power and money, they use it to yeah. amass more of it. Okay. And but at the same time, since this has affected a lot of people equally, and uh, since most people who have a lot of power and wealth, they have businesses running. And it's these businesses which have been affected. But again, it's affected a lot of people equally. So you really can't exactly say. Plus, I'm not an expert on inequality gaps. But but talking about inequality gap, I feel that it is going to widen by a larger margin. See, because this is my you know theory. Because see, there's a lot of uh, a vast majority of workers all around the work uh, all around the world are temporary workers, right? Mm-hmm. They work on wages and mm-hmm. stuff. So, and they can be laid off any time. Mm-hmm. And in fact, people working in big companies can also be laid off any time, right? In so, fact, they are being laid off right now. Yeah, in fact, they are being laid off. That is exactly correct. So they're being laid off. So since this crisis has happened mm-hmm. and companies are losing money mm-hmm. and especially smaller companies and startups and, you know, other like industry, small scale industries, they've taken a massive hit right now. Mm-hmm. So don't you think they're going to lay off employees or they're going to stop recruiting those uh, minimum wage or daily wage workers? So eventually it is going to lead to, you know, a lot of unemployment. And because of that, it's going to lead to a, you know, wider inequality gap. That is what I feel. Well, right now, I don't think anyone's recruiting people. But uh, once this coronavirus thing passes away, then things are going to pick up again. But in fact, right now, if you see the gap is kind of shortening because because yeah. a lot of stimulus programs from the government, they're giving out food and stuff. And in fact, in certain companies, you can see CEOs and top management either cutting half their salary or not taking a paycheck at all so that they could yeah, pay yeah. their employees, which is actually a good thing. It shows. So... Yeah, that's a good move, actually. Yeah. And I also read about, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, World Bank and stuff releasing trillions of dollars as economic relief. Yeah. Also to countries and also to, you know, companies and industries so that they can get back up as soon as this crisis ends. Yeah, because uh, these businesses are crucial. They they form the fabric of society because once these businesses fail, then everything falls, the economy falls. And then you can't have proper trade or proper allocation of resources within a country. Mm -hmm. So, which is why, which is why, for example, uh, even though a lot of people hate big banks and all, which is why even though in 2008, a lot of those banks crashed and all, the government, they're forced to come out with bailout packages. Because if banks fail, everything goes to waste. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, also I was reading on Reddit, Mm -hmm. someone said that this current crisis will lead to more restraints on mass consumption. So what do you have to say about that? More restraints on mass consumption? Yeah. Uh, I wish I could ask that guy, what does he exactly mean? I have no idea. I was just going through Reddit (laughs) through the economic form and I just saw someone making a comment that uh, this current crisis would cause you know restraints on mass consumption in the future because see i'll give you my take on this mm-hmm. because currently the world is consuming more than ever right mm-hmm. i don't think i've ever consumed this much <laughs> in any point of history talking about any resource mm-hmm. so since this crisis has uh led to a total halt in manufacturing mm-hmm. so wouldn't that cause a decrease in supply yes absolutely and the demand would be higher than ever. I would say even demand might go down because a lot of these people are going to be out without jobs or maybe they might okay. have a low uh, income job. So I guess it's going to start out with both low supply and low demand. But over time, they'll both start picking up and we'll be back at square one. Okay, so the price is going to be back on track after a while because demand and supply is what de- uh, determine the price, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so so this will be a temporary thing, but eventually, after our recovery phase, everything will be on track. Mm-hmm. All that could All right. take so, quite some time to get there. Or it might take quite some time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Because we are talking about manufacturing, right? And the biggest manufacturing behemoth is China, obviously. Mm-hmm. 
and also india as well but china is the biggest one out there mm-hmm. and currently like it has stopped manufacturing obviously it has stopped its factories mm-hmm. so do you think that has affected the global economy in any way or that is what might lead to a major slowdown in the future or a recession could you come again like what i wanted to say is if because of china stopping its production mm-hmm. right its mass production its mass manufacturing mass imports exports mm-hmm. so is this leading to a significant uh, decrease or increase in the uh, global economy well if you have a lot of supply you also need demand to meet it because yeah. right now since people's incomes are going down since a lot of people are being laid off people are switching to low paying jobs so it doesn't make sense to have mass production if there's no mass consumption although there mm-hmm. are certain products which uh, for example cigarettes their increase in demand cause a lot of people use it as a uh, stress relief okay so things like those demand would increase but pretty much everything else demand might go down cause especially luxury goods okay but overall uh, i believe china has started uh, coming back after all yeah, this I- assume all this manufacturing services soon yeah i guess that was today i guess 4th of april right i i suppose yeah it was going to resume its uh, manufacturing today so let's see where that goes and talking about you know uh, the global economy and global uh, difference in prices and lot of demand and supply mm-hmm. i read an interesting article today it was about the oil price war mm-hmm. because of corona virus obviously mm-hmm. so basically oil prices have gone down mm-hmm. significantly gone down mm-hmm. so because of that you know the two major oil producing nations like russia and saudi arabia mm-hmm. are battling over oil prices mm-hmm. and like and i and you understand that oil prices do uh, you know uh, cause a significant change in the global economy right mm-hmm. and how this constant competition between two countries has uh, led to you know ups and downs in economies mm-hmm. and even in our own market because we buy from them mm-hmm. on so our own economy depends on oil price mm-hmm. so i read an interesting article that russia is selling mm-hmm. oil at the cost of 4 dollars per barrel mm-hmm. so so do you have like do you think this is because of corona like majorly because of corona or uh, any other reason or how what this might lead to in the future this oil price decrease well russia does depend a lot on oil yeah selling of oil yeah so and the other stakeholder would be saudi arabia mhm so so they were supposed to meet today and go over this cause they right. they're okay. the competing against each other and the price is going down and I, okay. and i believe they've uh, delayed the meeting actually so we <laughs> they never know what yeah they had to they have to right <laughs> yeah so there's no other way So, like either they can do an online meeting or <laughs> we call it it's, there's no way you're doing a meeting especially about such a critical <laughs> issue there's no way you're doing it this casually and and country ob- obviously buying- obviously you can uh, speculate that the united states has some interest in it considering uh, so yeah yeah obviously yeah. Obviously, yeah. obviously they're going to have some interest in it all right so that's that okay i had another question mm-hmm. since this corona virus is a medical related thing obviously falls in the medical industry mm-hmm. so we have to talk about the pharma industry and biotech industry right mm-hmm. and currently there's been so much hype about biotech industries mm-hmm. like people are jumping on the hype train and ever since this corona virus news broke out mm-hmm. people have been investing like crazy in biotech firms mm-hmm. so there has been a massive spike massive increase in the amount of people investing in biotech firms than other firms mm-hmm. so um, yeah obviously it makes sense that because this is trending right now mm-hmm. the biotech firms and obviously they're going to make money they're obviously going to make money because uh, uh, some biotech firms are going to come out with some solutions right mm-hmm. for coronavirus and people are going to buy on that people are going to like 
capitalize on that right mm-hmm. so that is why they've been investing in the biotech firms or pharma firms mm-hmm. so do you think that is a viable option for long time for long term like what if corona virus is done and we are done with this ep- epidemic in like six months or one year mm-hmm. what about this after that are they going to come down or are they going to rise up steadily so what do you think might happen and you also had some experience with pharma stocks right Mm-hmm. so if you could share that well something funny is that when the corona thing hit actually a lot of uh, pharma stocks have lost their value which is very ironic i remember uh, sitting in front of the trade terminal waiting to buy those stocks as the market opens so that i could set it higher when the day ends but if you take a look at the graph for example let's take uh, sun pharmaceutical So well, that's a big company. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the largest uh, companies in India. It's an Indian MNC, and mm-hmm. if you see for the past six months, their highest price was about four hundred and fifty-eight, and this was back in twenty-seventh okay. November. Okay, that was way before Corona. Yeah. I think impacted way the before. market. I guess. And the next yeah. uh, price point would be around four fifty, which was in January. Comparable. So mm-hmm. then market was. going sideways if you ask me but then all right about in the end of january from there it starts going down and the uh, and the lowest it has ever been was 324 which is on 23rd of march okay that is fairly recently yeah so that's more than 100 rupees in drop which is mm-hmm. which is a lot that's so so which is why you can't exactly say that okay it's uh corona virus is huge and also i should probably be pharma stock cause yeah. there, there are many factors which always play around which you may not see directly for example there could be a lot of regulatory issues policies and for, cause corona virus also impacts a lot of trade logistics and all so those all right. could have impacted things which happen which you cannot see directly in fact i mm-hmm. in fact uh, i had gone to my professor and we spoke extensively about this why pharma stocks were crashing despite it could be more than more profitable than ever since corona was such a huge thing it could also yeah. be because uh, at that point in time uh, corona did not enter india yet it was said mm-hmm. yeah. but india as a precautionary message uh, banned imports in fact i, rem- I I'm sorry. Banned exports of certain uh, APIs. I believe it's called active pharmaceutical ingredients. You would know that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I guess uh, because of that, they could not export, and hence uh, missed out on a uh, capitalist opportunity. Okay. So again, so it's pretty unpredictable, right? Yeah. You may never know what are the underlying factors which push the price up or down. all right so okay so it's unpredictable and you can't just uh, jump on the hype hype train and yeah. it never works usually yeah. so i mean it works some of the t- the time but not all of the time okay it doesn't work okay. enough times that you ought to take things with a grain of salt all right so that's something i need to be <laughs> careful about i might have invested in that <laughs> there are a lot of people might have invested in that because hmm. usually people jump on the hype train right hmm. people don't or and uh, okay about this so if you had to give a advice mm-hmm. like to study about markets what would you say or how do you study markets or a company to to whether invest to invest in it or not so when it comes to the stock market you can do two things you can either invest or you can trade so all right investing comes when you buy and hold anything for a period longer than one year and mm-hmm. trading is when you buy and sell within a year's period it could be within the day by now sell in the next few seconds minutes or hours it should be intraday or also day trading or you could buy today and sell tomorrow or you can buy and sell within the next few weeks or few months mm-hmm. so for this there's two types of analysis that you do you do fundamental analysis and technical analysis okay fundamental analysis is when you check out the company's earnings its balance sheets its management its ceo its product portfolio right. things like that that's where you 
research in depth about the company you research the competition the sector you do a political analysis you check macroeconomic trends but on the other hand you have technical analysis where you don't care about all those gibberish the only thing that you look for is patterns and you trade based on those patterns so primarily when it comes to investing you use fundamental analysis and when it comes to trading you use uh, technical analysis okay so basically there's a lot to hold on to if i enter the market <laughs> you just need to there's a lot to study. you just need to pick one and then go you just take that road like if i'm a person okay. who i don't want to be very actively involved so i mm -hmm. just go for investing i could sit and do my research pick a company buy and then hold for quite long term i won't be that's bothered long, about this small that's long term right pardon that's a long term thing right yes. you're just studying company and you're putting yes. money in it is that waiting but if you're an impatient All... person like me just mm -hmm. just learn technical analysis and you could day trade or you could and you day trade yeah. right day trade yeah. okay since we're talking about day trade can you just let people know about you know the basics of stock market trading like if I want to start investing, or uh, sorry, I want to start trading mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you could explain the basic steps. Honestly speaking, right now is one of the worst times you could get into the market for trading purposes, because everything's mm -hmm. really volatile. Even though it okay. appears that everything's going down, things are going up like crazy. Also, for example, uh, SEBI, which is the Securities Exchange Board of India. So they're okay. they're the regulatory authority for the stock market. So I don't remember the exact date, but early March, uh, the Indian stock market crashed by ten percent, and it mm -hmm. had to halt trading for forty five minutes. And okay, I think this is called like short circuit or something. Right? It's it's called a circuit breaker. It's there circuit to circuit breaker. It's yeah, there to prevent markets from to falling too much too fast. So it's all right. It's to slow down the fall. Mm -hmm. So, but and did what, that? Pardon? Did that work? Uh, does this strategy work? Well, it's it it's to uh, pull people out of their emotions. Because if if I see the market is falling, I would also what mm -hmm. is start shorting stocks. Shorting is you basically bet the market to fall. So if you All see right. it falling, everyone would keep selling because it is falling. So once you hold it for a while, then you have forty five minutes to sit and think. About it, so that's when yeah. it sort of right. pulled the emotion out. And surprisingly enough, even though the markets crashed ten percent, after mm -hmm. the circuit breaker was enacted and those forty-five minutes passed, trading was resumed. Markets actually okay. went up twenty percent from that point. So, and net okay went increased. up. Yes, went up. Oh, wow. One of the yes. largest increases. That's an interesting mechanism. <laughs> Which which is pretty surprising. I did not expect it to go up, and I believe within a week or two it hit another circuit breaker. But this time it didn't go up, but the market mm -hmm. moves sideways. Okay, so once again proves how unpredictable the market is. Yes, right? yes. And you can't just go in blind. Honestly, it's you one of the start... worst times to get into trade because it's very volatile. You you need a high skill to trade in these markets. Okay. But in but if you're already familiar with the stock market, I think now is a good time to actually learn a lot of things. Maybe you should reduce your risk profile, trade less number of shares, and reduce okay. the stop loss. Cause you know what they say: uh, uh, calm seas never made a tough sailor. So okay. I've never been more violent than this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay. Like talking in generally. Mm -hmm. Like if I want to invest, what are the steps? Like I know you have to make a uh, like DMAT account, I guess. Mm -hmm. So like, would you let's just go through that those steps? Like, well, first you cannot account. directly buy or sell stocks. You need to have a license for it. So these certain okay, people right. who have a license who become your stock broker, so they have the they have the license to buy and sell. They do it on behalf of you. Okay. So mostly, I believe it's your bank. A lot of banks have uh, these facilities. You just need to call and ask them. For example, mm -hmm. yeah, let's yeah. say bank is one. 
alternatively okay. you can also go to other other brokerage firms like zeroda which is what i use okay, okay. there's also upstock right yeah yeah there's okay. plenty like share khan is also one so there's two kinds of brokers apart from your bank cause mm-hmm. not very familiar how it works with the bank but otherwise you have these discount brokers who have little to no commission okay full service brokers who charge high commission okay but the but here's the other separating point other than the price commissions is discount brokers give you little to no advice they don't give mm-hmm. quotes or anything all the they okay, give you on pardon you're on your own yeah you're, you're you want... basically on your own even though they give right. charts and tools apart from that you're on your own and when right. full service brokers they give you a lot of recommendations advice and so on so it's completely up to the person if they feel like they need a holding hand they can go with a full service broker if they feel confident enough on their own then they can go with a discount broker and save on commission okay so basically if you're making big moves then you can go on the other side right the full service ones so that you can say stay at totally the same time in... upon the individual their confidence and how good they know how well they know of the conditions etc all right so it varies mm-hmm. so it, ma- it depends on the person to person mm-hmm. all right but but like comparatively like if i'm talking like 10 years ago mm-hmm. and now mm-hmm. trading is much more easy right what do you think yeah right i believe discount brokers primarily came in now because even back then you had such high commissions so which means mm-hmm. the more you trade regardless of you making a profit or not your broker always did make some cash on that because at the end of the day okay. it doesn't matter if you go up or down he gets to keep money okay this is something like wolf of wall street right <laughs> uh, that is one fun movie if you ask me <laughs> yeah yeah i actually saw it i was going through a list of movies that you know every investor or trader must watch mm-hmm. and that was like top 3 in that list well, like is there anything that you can actually learn from that movie like trading related <laughs> well i guess it shows you uh, things that you should be careful of like yeah that's there yeah correct which is why you never mm-hmm. get into penny stocks penny stocks are stocks which have uh, the share price like really low mm-hmm. sell for pennies so i guess in our indian stock market we could like maybe idea and vodafone cause i believe okay. they trade they on stocks. pardon they, they sell penny stocks in india yeah you like you're telling right vodafone and penny stocks are basically stocks which have a really small share price for example a uh, vodafone idea today's closing price was 3.15 rupees per share okay that's interesting okay i never knew about that yeah so they took a really big hit okay it's because of the hit yeah i mean uh, with jio's competition they've been going yeah really. that's obvious and right there's now, a lot of things in the telecom and vodafone and idea have been on the fall for a long time now i guess yeah they've been in fact falling from 2015 actually they and have... they also got lot to repay right to the government that i'm not sure of, but yeah there's talks about that something like that about this telecom i'm not sure their specific details yeah every industry has taken hit basically especially after this corona virus right mm-hmm. every single industry especially you know airlines yeah. and manufacturing yeah. everything is on it's just falling it's just mm-hmm. crumbling down mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so and the government is coming up with relief packages so obviously mm-hmm. it has to Mm-hmm. but it's uncertain right what's mm-hmm. going to happen yeah because this and affects every country on the planet so you yeah really every can't... country not just india every country and people have been working hard to you know get a solution for this and to know what is going to happen after this crisis mm-hmm. and we also don't know how long this is going to last right yeah so people have been talking about a recession mm-hmm. they're pretty sure a recession is going to hit mm-hmm. and it's going to hit us hard mm-hmm. and at the same time this analyst who are predicting a depression mm-hmm. 
so like what would you say like how would you explain if you could explain what the depression and recession is and if you could give us your opinion whether this could happen like i personally i don't think a depression is going to hit us mm-hmm. but uh, i i think a recession might hit us hard mm-hmm. so as you said earlier we're already going through this we are already facing and slow down mm-hmm. if you could explain like depression and recession in short and how what uh, and if we could see this in the future after this crisis or not so as i mentioned earlier a recession is basically when your gdp growth is negative for two consecutive quarters it's mm-hmm. not a slow down but it's a negative gdp and meanwhile a, okay. a depression is a severe form of recession where uh, it's where the recessions for a longer period of time and it falls even more so th- okay. so there is quite some good chances mm-hmm. of it being a depression for certain countries but mostly mm. people will just experience a recession and india would have a slowdown as usual in fact uh, i believe they estimated china's gdp growth rate to fall to 1% which is the lowest in, in recent times for china because it's india and china, okay, china yeah because it's india and china which has the highest growth rates and now so mm-hmm. we slow down to 1% i'm not sure what's the forecast for india but india would also slow down but compared to the rest okay. of the world we will even though we've slowed down we will not be in a recession but slow okay, down we will not be in a- slow down is not good news either okay but it's better than recession right it's absolutely. something better absolutely news. and it's something that we can recover from especially when the whole world is in recession uh, a slow down like we are in a pretty good position right compared to other mm-hmm. so that this could be our you know rise our long actually, waited actually we've been waiting for our market to you know build up again <laughs> actually right in in fact okay since we talked about the states months, could have a lot of problem because they've handled the situation mm-hmm. really really bad in fact De- okay despite uh, i believe they've had over 3000 deaths or was it 3000 more case in the last 24 hours i'm not sure but basically okay. us is the worst country right now with the corona virus and and yeah. there's still places in the us without lockdowns so they yeah to- there's a lot of states without lockdowns yeah they've handled it so, so bad. they're still handling it yeah and i'm not at all optimistic in the future so this could mm. derail america's power or uh, maybe it might yeah uh, in terms of we can't in terms it. of geopolitics i'm not really sure how the world is going to look in the upcoming decade cause mm. the one thing whether you like it or not that the us has always been doing was trying to prevent the emergence of a regional power which, yeah. which is why you see them uh, dipping their toes in every other countries uh, political issue exactly fact, exactly yeah, that's right that's the right. us tries to maintain a power a power balance between uh, india and pakistan yeah that's correct if yeah. them grows too powerful then that could be a threat to the us later on which is also yeah, trying to control china you know exert a lot of pressure in the south china sea things like that okay yeah yeah that's correct yeah i heard about so, that. so basically so whether you that, like it yeah. or not uh the us does maintain world peace by by creating a lot of trouble for a lot of other countries let's see what happens yeah yeah correct yeah that's exactly correct yeah so basically like i feel that they were really like overconfident about mm-hmm. this maybe corona virus crisis and they did not imagine that it would hit so early and it would hit so hard mm-hmm. and it would rise at uh such an unprecedented scale mm. and they're facing the consequences right now yeah in fact if, if you if you check the news they've been hijacking uh... so basically they've been playing the blame game with countries like china right they've been trying to blame stuff they're trying to regain their position right in the global scenario oh they've been certainly blaming china in fact trump uh, even calls it the the virus from china i mean yeah 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 china, exactly chinese yeah. virus yeah i quote his yeah. chinese virus and they're standing to the ground actually they're not even uh, trying to correct the mistakes uh, they're pretty strong about their opinion uh, in fact they've been hijacking so... a lot of shipments of, uh, of right. these these medical equipment for example yeah exactly yeah i saw a um, article like yeah. uh, this company 
3M wanted to ship a few hundred thousand uh, N95 mm-hmm. masks to Singapore. Mm-hmm. And the government like went on hard on them and they basically gave them a notice and told them not to ship them. I mean, that sort of makes sense because 3M is at the end of the day an American company. And, uh, yeah, I believe there, exactly. was, there were certain laws regarding, I do not know the exact terms, but uh, there were certain laws mm-hmm. in times like these where uh, you had to put your own country first. I don't remember what the exact yeah, act was, but there's something like that. But what's more alarming is the fact that, for example, uh, France was trying to import medical equipment from China, but at the last minute, uh, the US comes and hijacks it as it was being uh, shipped on the app. You know, from the airport, things like that. Okay. Not just with France, but many other countries too. You could probably read upon that in the news. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll search for that article and I'll link it for people to read actually. Mm-hmm. And talking about prioritizing our own country mm-hmm. and shipments. Mm-hmm. So I saw this article recently, which said mm-hmm. India shipped medical equipment, mm-hmm. masks, and stuff mm-hmm. to Serbia. Oh yeah. And that this happens amidst this, you know, crisis mm-hmm. happening in our country. Uh, and we are seeing like exponential growth mm-hmm. of cases. The condition is getting worse. Mm-hmm. And and our environment is such that uh, it is difficult for us to, you know, uh, follow lockdown protocols and procedures because uh, there's a huge diversity and there's a diverse range of people in our country, right? Mm-hmm. So amidst all of this happening in our country, mm-hmm. So India goes on to ship medical equipment to Serbia. Mm-hmm. So I have my own theory. So what would you say? And then I'll go on to tell mine. I believe maybe there's some corruption involved because it's it's ridiculous. In fact, there's been a lot of outrage over this. Yeah, exactly. That, that is what my uh, speculation was. I was thinking corruption. Yeah. Because the only reason when a country would uh, export things mm-hmm. Especially in situations like this, especially in scenarios mm-hmm. like this, is when you have committed to them, mm-hmm. right? And you commit to a country mm-hmm. only when you have enough for your own self, mm-hmm. right? So what I feel is this is where corruption comes mm-hmm. in. So, so basically, the hospitals in our country mm-hmm. are supposed to have this equipment. Mm-hmm. And the government and like most of the governments all around the world, they don't work on facts, they work on documents, mm-hmm. right? Don't see what's happening real time. They they believe in documentation. They want evidence. Mm-hmm. Like if a document says that my hospital has like hundred masks, mm-hmm. it has hundred masks. Mm-hmm. But in reality, my hospital might not have that equipment, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel this is what has happened. Like countries all over the world, mm-hmm. like uh, sorry, hospitals all over the world mm-hmm. are sanctioned equipment. Mm-hmm. In this crisis, mm-hmm. there's no equipment. All of a sudden, doctors are complaining about equipment. Doctors are like, uh, uh, in fact, getting infected. Mm-hmm. That really shows the severity of the situation right now and how much we are lacking in terms of medical equipment and PPEs, mm-hmm. personal protection equipments. Mm-hmm. So this is where corruption comes in. So basically, a hospital is supposed to have the equipment, mm-hmm. but it does not. Mm-hmm. But the document says this hospital has the equipment, mm-hmm. right? So, but since the document says uh, uh, they have the equipment, the government has to go with that commitment mm-hmm. to its ally or to whoever is in need. Mm-hmm. And they have to ship out uh, the equipment. That is what they did. They shipped out the equipment, mm-hmm. right? But the, in reality, we don't have enough for our own. Mm-hmm. This is where people are crying out loud. People have been complaining. Mm-hmm. I feel this is one side the people don't see. This is, I feel one of the possible explanations, mm-hmm. but in the very end, it's wrong, mm-hmm. right? What about like government? Government is like too broad. I'm talking about a very broad term government. I can't blame the government, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of things happening in between. There's so many middlemen, mm-hmm. right? So many articles we've been reading for the past few years about this medical mafias and things being out of place, money being dislocated and so many things. But again, there could be some other reasons also that India shipped all of this to Serbia. Yeah, there might be. There might be. I was checking like reports, but there was no possible explanation given. One such explanation was the fact that uh, the items, the medical equipment, uh, which was exported to Serbia, 
none of them came under the items on the prohibited list but again okay but yeah. again at the end of the yeah, day I... you're the government you're the one who writes what those lists exactly. consist of yeah there's a prohibited list actually yeah even after serbia we've been uh, exporting and importing mm -hmm. stuff and we have a prohibited list which is basically for the pharma companies mm -hmm. if you're a pharma company and you want to export mm -hmm. things because you've been getting a order from outside and in the end you're a private company mm -hmm. right you would definitely accept the order and the government can't stop mm -hmm. you or they can't impose restrictions uh, in scenarios like this because this is your moment of doing good mm -hmm. business right in the end it's all about earning money mm -hmm. and but still government has given you few restrictions mm -hmm. because that is that is correct that is the right thing to do and they have placed restrictions only on like specific chemicals mm -hmm. that might be used in corona virus treatment mm -hmm. or to make formulations mm -hmm. right but like other equipment you're free to just export mm -hmm. but still you know this uh, imbalance or you know very diff like lot of differences in the markets there's one private side there's one government side there's one export side and in the on the other end there's hospitals so maybe due to this uh, you know differences lot of differences or lack of coordination maybe that is why uh, there's hospitals out there lacking medical equipment mm -hmm. and at the same time people there's a lot of panic among people mm -hmm. right people are not taking this easily people are not listening to the government in ways mm -hmm. so all of this like added up together ultimately is affecting us mm -hmm. so and and our old mistakes like mistakes that we have made in the past in terms of economy and market and slow downs mm -hmm. so ultimately this is all becoming a burden on us right now mm -hmm. so this is just like a brief overview of things right economy wise mm -hmm. so that is what has been happening so since we talk about recessions we have talked about markets we have talked about economy slow downs and everything mm -hmm. like i would now like to ask about the future the future okay the future is not predictable mm -hmm. obviously we can't say what's going to happen if it's going to rise fall if it's going to stay positive negative we can't say mm -hmm. that but if i want to ask you that uh, in the future mm -hmm. if we were to face any crisis like this any situation like this because things like corona virus don't happen every now and then right yeah. it is not a frequent occurrence and we can't predict that in our for economic forecasts and uh, any other prediction scale mm -hmm. and it's going to hit us hard so in the future if we were to face an economic crisis like this or a medical crisis which might lead to a economic mm -hmm. crisis so is there any uh you know measure or advice that countries or the whole world could take as one to start preparing or to stay on their toes and stay prepared for if something like this happens to stay safe or to stay on the safer side in the future i think this was a good wake up call for all the countries out there because uh, most yeah. of these countries they, they they never really thought of bio weapons in fact there's some word saying that uh, okay the corona virus was maybe a bio weapon which accidentally got leaked out because i believe mm, yeah, in, I believe in wuhan they have a virology lab and maybe there was a chance that it was a bio weapon because it's very similar to the sars virus but even but this is all speculation yeah, it's just right just pure speculation but at the end of the day countries never yeah. really took bio weapons that seriously so now it's, it's a wake up call so countries would be putting more emphasis on the health sector and in fact in the us things might change cause it's got a really 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 bad uh, healthcare system with insurance companies dominating yeah. and things like that exactly it's a wake up call for the whole world basically hmm. right like people are going to like approach things differently they're going Certainly. to save things differently they're going to stay sustainable differently right now from now on not just the government yeah. but and even big companies are going to take this uh, exactly yeah 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 because government can make back their money right but companies yeah. can't so and especially smaller companies because they've already taken the hit in such a small period of mm -hmm. time they've fallen yeah. they've tumbled down so and it is very difficult for them to recover and i was reading this article just few hours ago and so basically bank of america which is one of the world's biggest mm -hmm. banks go a uh, you know like cumulative request of like almost like 
like a few billion dollars i don't remember the exact mm-hmm. figure but it was a lot of money by almost 58000 small companies mm-hmm. like they are basically asking out for loans they're running out of cash they're running out of capital <laughs> they need money to sustain in the future yeah. so all this is happening so since we're talking about countries slowing down and how we'll stay on our toes mm-hmm. right now do you think this situation will lead to a stronger domestic chain and you know lesser uh, significance is given to imports and exports or depending on other countries do you think anything like that would happen like indigenous supply would enhance i think a lot of countries would now focus on being self reliant or at least the government would yeah exactly come up with policies and incentives to uh, in the long run make the country self reliant so that in case mm-hmm. such lockdowns happen they can, they do not need to depend externally exactly exactly because lot of countries have been facing this problem mm-hmm. right their supply chains are stuck mm-hmm. they are basically gone mm-hmm. right now currently so and and they have no domestic mm-hmm. sources of mm-hmm. things for things so basically now countries are going to stay more uh, vigilant about this mm-hmm. maybe and they're going to develop uh, domestic supply mm-hmm. chains to meet their own needs in situations mm-hmm. like this so lot of things are going to change basically and this might also like talking about our own country we have a make in india yeah. program right so this might uh, be taken to the next level basically Uh, if not for industries like this is currently for industries only mm-hmm. make in india thing manufacturing and all no, that fact, if, and if, this if can... you're a startup you can uh, apply for many of those government schemes exactly yeah hmm yeah and i i think all the startups and people out there who are running small businesses maybe cottage industries and all that should look out for government incentives because they're giving out mm-hmm. cash right now so it's up to us like we need to register and you know make sure our licenses and everything mm-hmm. are verified so that we can get those incentives which might help us get back on mm-hmm. our feet after this crisis so yeah as you said earlier things uh, are going to increase mm-hmm. like for sure in the future but we are not sure how long it is going mm-hmm. to take so and and as you said like uh, this is a rock bottom we are going to hit rock bottom but we are going to bounce back right yeah so that is one of the positives of this downfall mhm and there are many more though there's lot of harsh things ra- happening right now to all the sectors mm-hmm. but we are all going to bounce back right eventually, eventually. we are going to rise back up the market going to come up yeah eventually because we don't know when but it is going to happen because even after the 2008 stock market crash mm-hmm. it came back things started increasing few people even capitalized on that situation <laughs> in fact as i mentioned earlier now is the best time to buy stocks cause everything exactly so now is the best time to buy stocks now is the best time to actually you know experiment or learn study the market you know get into the analysis part of things oh yeah in fact it's you actually know? one of the best times to study exactly it's the best time to study so you can there's lot of videos online you can take up courses mm-hmm. and stuff to study it is like not a big deal because we see so many people coming up becoming traders mm. every single day and they're all self made yeah. right like if i'm not wrong there are so many self made and you are a self made trader as well if i'm not wrong well i wouldn't say purely i had my sources yeah i would say okay. for the most part yeah but the see the main thing is you took the initiative mm-hmm. right so people can take the initiative they can give it a shot yeah there's so much free resources and available and in future, i guess for everyone's future like trading is a really good source of you know side income and staying in the market mm. understanding things being a part of the economy and best part is you can right? work from home so you don't have to interact yeah. with people don't have to worry about yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly but but yeah it takes time you might fail you might lose money yeah um, and yeah talking about losing mm-hmm. money uh so, like if we were to give mm-hmm. a advice and this applies to me as well so i've been wanting mm-hmm. to trade and there's lot of people who've been wanting to mm-hmm. trade but they just they can't just let go of that initial capital they just don't want to take that risk you know and risk factor is everything in this uh, mm-hmm. field right of you have to take the risk if you are not taking the risk then you can't make it up there right so there is actually a misconception that uh, if you want high rewards you have to take high risk 
because it's actually okay. a spectrum it's it's like uh, there's low risk high risk there's low reward high reward so what people usually okay. think is risk and reward they go hand in hand and they like correlated in fact it's not you can always go yeah. for things which have uh, low risk but high reward yeah so which is which is but it can be the other way around as pardon? well right? it might be the other way around as well you can't yeah. predict so mostly it comes down to your analysis so when it comes to the stock market yeah, but you got you just need two risk, things right? when it comes to stock market one is your analysis it should be on point mm-hmm. and second is your money management or risk management yeah that's important <laughs> i i feel money management is important for everyone regardless of you being in the stock market mm-hmm. or not in, for your future if you're running mm-hmm. a company or if you're running a startup if you're running any you know scheme or organization mm-hmm. anything even like if you're running a small lemonade mm-hmm. stall money management is everything right it is very important everywhere but it's the most important when it comes to the stock market because it, it's it's mm-hmm. like betting you if you want to win you have to place a bet which means exactly yeah. exactly but at the same time that's it. you cannot bet if you don't have any chips correct correct that's correct that's correct that is the best analogy actually i've heard <laughs> about this so basically you need to bet out there right people like me talking about myself i'm scared to bet i just don't want to waste my mm-hmm. capital so i'm not taking that mm-hmm. risk basically if i'm not taking the risk i'm not stepping in the market and i'm losing out on so many things every single mm-hmm. minute right and this applies to lot of people lot of like young people out there or even other people who are just not taking this risk who are not just playing the cards properly mm-hmm. right so this would be your advice right to go take the risk take risk but you have to manage it as well in fact there's something called stop loss yeah. So you, okay. I personally use it. Not just me. In fact, every day trader uses stop losses to manage his or her risk. For example, let's okay. say my risk tolerance is five rupees. If I can okay. comfortably lose five rupees, I can lose four. But if I lose a rupee beyond five, I'm just gonna cry. I'm gonna break down. I'm gonna get depressed. Just assume that. Mm-hmm. Now let's say yeah. I buy a stock for hundred rupees, and I'm feeling pretty optimistic. and i'm thinking okay it's going to go up but i know for a fact that i'm willing to lose only 5 rupees and not more so which means uh, my stop okay. loss would be set at 95 okay. so that means if the price fluctuates and it touches 95 the share gets sold and i'm out of the trade i book my loss at 5 rupees okay. and that's it Okay, so that's an important yeah. aspect, and you only know about this when you manage money, right? If I'm not Pardon? wrong, you only know about this uh, stock loss thing and how to, you know, know whether you should spend, you should not go beyond that five rupees is when you manage your money, right? So it's completely uh, up to how much risk you can take. What's your risk tolerance? So this will be okay. different for every person. as a, as a okay. gen as yeah, a general yeah. rule of thumb we have something like uh, not to risk more than 1% of your total capital per trade okay okay that's interesting so for example if i have 4000 with me i i will not risk more than 40 mm-hmm. rupees per trade okay 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 so you following that one yes it's a general rule of thumb but it would differ from person mm-hmm. to person Um, okay just, that that that's just for staying on the safer end mm-hmm. right okay so basically you have to take the risk at the same time you have to be smart mm-hmm. yeah dude and being smart in managing your money and studying analyzing things right the stop loss exists there so that uh, cause uh, as i as i mentioned in my example i'm comfortable taking 5 rupees right So now, mm-hmm. if I'm not comfortable risking ten rupees, if I'm not comfortable losing ten rupees, then it wouldn't make sense to to try and take that risk, even if I'm not comfortable, because I might panic and uh, what? Let's say my analysis was right, but for a brief time it just went down. So I might oh. panic and I might sell it off before it actually goes up again. Okay, so you need to stay yeah, aware. Yeah, so you just. you stop losses to bring the emotion out of the game you can't fight okay, yeah. so before there's this okay. saying you 
plan the trade and then you mm -hmm. trade the plan okay okay that's that's really that's so within your plan yeah. you beforehand mention what's your risk tolerance how much am i gonna risk so let's say let's say maybe i'm willing to lose 10 rupees and let's say the stock price is at 50 okay so if i am willing to risk 10 rupees that means uh, i can either buy one share at 50 rupees and i'll be okay if it falls till 40 or i can buy two shares okay and i'll be okay if it falls till 45 okay so this is how you manage risk so at the end of the day uh, what do you say um yeah you sort of calculate based on it yeah so you need to stay careful you need to stay smart you need to calculate yeah. stuff so you need to just stay aware it's not that you put in your money and you go back to sleep you wake up and you watch your account get like a 10 percent rise it's not like I, that right that's a common i mean that can work as long as you have your stop loss in place <laughs> <laughs> okay because on, right. honestly trading is super right. chill so you could just yeah. finish your entire day's worth of trades in the first 10 minutes i've had this happen to me a couple of times i'm in class and night market opens at 9 15 i enter my trade at 9 30 and i make like 200 ish within five minutes and then i'm like oh, done okay. and, I, and then maybe i'll be like okay i can chill out for the rest of the day all right, that's that sounds fun actually, but yeah, there's a lot to it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the market okay, is so a bit slow, but uh, you see a trend. Let's say you identified an uptrend, and your confidence yeah. remain that way. So let's say the time is around ten o'clock, and you enter the trade, and it's going up. You still haven't exited it yet, so you can add something called mm -hmm. a trailing stop loss. So which okay. is a stop loss which will trail the price for example let's go back to my example of buying it at 100 rupees i set the stop loss mm -hmm. at 95 and okay. i add a trailing stop loss of 10. so which means okay. stop loss will be 10 rupees lower than the highest price so if the share price okay. moves to 101 right. my stop loss will mm -hmm. move to 96. Okay. So with this mechanism, I can just enter the trade and I can go to sleep. It will do everything for oh. me. So if the price keeps going higher, my stop loss will also keep yeah. going higher. And the market okay. crashes while I'm sleeping, the stop loss will execute it, and I'll be safe. It'll pull yeah, out. I'll be safe. I don't have anything to worry. Okay. And if okay, it is that's... continuously increasing, I can come back at the end of the day and I see, oh, it's going on increasing, and. I and okay. I can exit the trade, make my money. Or let's say it's continuously increasing. I'm sleeping. And all of a sudden it crashes. Mm -hmm. As in, let's say it went all the way up till 130. Mm. So with my trailing stop loss of, uh, what is the example? I forgot how much my trailing stop loss. Was it five? Yeah, it was five. Yeah. If my trailing stop loss is five and the stock goes up to 130, my stop loss would have updated okay. itself to 125. Okay, okay, that's 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 so great. that's the trailing that, stop loss. A... It trails behind the highest price, so I can just enter the okay. trade and just forget about it. I can sleep, I can chill. Okay, it it can't be that easy, right? Are you are you serious? I'm not kidding, but it it is like this. So as long as your analysis is on point, as long as you done your proper risk management, day trading is very chill. Okay okay that's that's really interesting that's something i'm going to check out <laughs> that's something i'm going to ask your help i'm going to figure this out i'm going to check this out for sure we could okay, I, I, this is the first time i'm hearing about this how come you never told me about this <laughs> we could definitely okay, this is something or, like some other day definitely in depth okay yeah sure we're going to write about this actually yeah this this is something very useful <laughs> this is the best thing i've heard this week to be honest <laughs> come on you're putting in money in the stock market you're risking it and at the same time like you're giving me assurance that you're going to stay safe come on those two words don't risk and safe don't play along they, they don't fit in as if and you're telling me it's possible yep as i mentioned before low risk high rewards it's it's yeah, something yeah. that correct correct makes sense yeah 
in fact i'm more optimistic about this right now and i'm sure like people hearing this are also <laughs> getting optimistic about this <laughs> interesting okay so and okay before we end it mm-hmm. since we talked about economies we talked about markets we talked about stock market uh, you know stock trading and everything associated with this mm-hmm. and I, and we were also taking to the indian scenario as well mm-hmm. which is relevant to mm-hmm. us so are there any books shows or podcasts that you want to recommend to the audience to our viewers well uh, i i believe before anyone gets into investing or trading they ought to know a little basics about companies or businesses or at least uh, some accounting terms accounting as in uh, how to read a balance sheet not necessarily okay. fill in entries or anything just to read a balance sheet yeah and uh, you have tons of resources online although you should be wary of certain ones but most of it is fine for example uh, zerodha okay. has uh, something called zerodha varsity which has okay. a ton of uh, resources out there absolutely for free okay. it has many modules I'll... such as uh, introductions to stock market technical analysis fundamental analysis and all right and these are all relevant to the indian market right yeah, so it would not be just in any stock market on the planet it could be in russia it could okay. be in the us singapore that's japan, great japan anywhere yeah yeah i'm going to check this out for sure and i hope people are also going to check this out yeah, before they step into this market ji it, it's in fact that is where i started because uh, to read certain books you need to have some basic knowledge So for your basic correct. knowledge you can absolutely go to zero the varsity we, we can certainly put down some links for this yeah yeah i'm going to put down links for this for sure and yeah and also i guess people people can uh, you know read books written by warren buffet and stuff to see how uh, they started yeah. this out just as a you know to get inspired maybe yeah and uh, warren buffet is primarily an investor so yeah he's an investor yeah but he has written like books uh related to this as well right trading and stuff yeah there's a book called the warren buffet way so that that could be an interesting one. read if they want to read about i i'm not, so much material out i don't there. think warren buffet wrote or i'm not really sure because there's a lot of book books out there about warren buffet which, yeah. which is written by other people No, he has few books as well. I guess I'm I don't. Sure, I never check them out. Always but... go back to that one book which inspired him, which was okay. the Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. That okay. was the book which inspired okay. him to get into the stock market. Okay. Strictly speaking, Warren Buffett is an investor, not a trader. So mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Correct. part they can always go through that. But to me, I'm yeah. more of a trader. All this started out. as an investor mm. but i i just didn't have the patience okay <laughs> and uh, also right. this website called investopedia even okay yeah yeah i know about that an amazing uh, amazing you know knowledge a lot of articles in fact a lot of these terms which people throw around left and right like bull market bear market things like that okay you can always google it and i'm pretty sure 9 out of 10 times investopedia would be on the top i know i know i know i know i, I actually you know when i was studying economics mm-hmm. i had economics in one of the semesters mm-hmm. so uh, i had to study and uh, i used to google stuff right to mm-hmm. know more about them or uh, this like uh, what is this called marginal utility and all mm-hmm. that these terms mm-hmm. which were like Uh, not familiar to me because i come from a biology background right mm-hmm. but i had to study economics for mm-hmm. a while so whenever i used to search mm-hmm. uh, to know more about these terms to more about to study these graphs there were a lot of graphs and curves right mm-hmm. so uh, that website always popped up on the top and I, and they had great content and Absolutely. videos i probably i remember yeah i shared it with few of the people and they found it useful as well like other students it's it's one of so, the best places to go to. even if you're yeah. an intermediate or an advanced person from time to time you can okay. always as to be that's that's great that's great like like we're really like grateful that we have free resources hmm. like zerodha as you said zerodha has free resources and yeah, yeah. investopedia is also a free resource and best part is uh, which many people don't realize is that 
even the college library has amazing resources exactly yeah exactly yeah in fact i'm that's, missing that's right correct. now i'm missing the fact that i do not have a physical book in my hand like i used to be so crazy yeah. that sometimes i used to finish an entire book in two days like yeah every early morning i would go to college issue that book every five minutes when i get in class i would just read and tomorrow yeah that's a great experience actually you should definitely check out your library it would have a lot of resources yeah the thing is most people check out their libraries but they are looking for the wrong stuff <laughs> they're looking for syllabus they're looking for answers to questions which teachers gave them from you know books so that is what people are looking at that is what i've noticed that is what i look at when i go to the library <laughs> to be honest so that that needs to change i guess because uh, because i i also look for you know syllabus books but at the same time i read other books and i have books of my own in my room i have like uh, right in front of me i have like uh, eight books mm -hmm. so different books i have few like entrepreneurship related books i have novels i have like personal enhancement books i have mm -hmm. fiction so and in and my library is massive and i assume yours is also like absolutely. big absolutely we have an elevator within the library four yeah, floors we have we have like a three four uh, story library and there's everything over there that you basically have to look you have to start looking hmm. you have to open your eyes that is what people are not doing right now right even when we talk if we're talking about stocks and stuff risks and all that we talked about all of this but in the end it comes to the person you know willing to go in there hmm. right so that is what people are not doing and they're missing out on this actually there's always a time to start yeah it's never too late to start exactly it's never too late to start it's never too late to start so so that those were some of the topics we talked about markets economies uh, and you really gave us a great uh, in depth knowledge about you know stock market trading and we had a great conversation about mm -hmm. uh, you know global and indian markets and recessions depressions and so many things mm -hmm. and i'm sure people are going to enjoy this and you also gave us some you know resource spread, uh, recommendations you told us zeroda and you also told us investopedia and i'm going to link everything in the description and this spot and this podcast will be available in spotify i'll i'll be trying my best to get it up there and it'll be available on youtube and uh, uh, soundcloud as well and and also you're going to be writing a trading related blog on the sure, sure. Uh, idyllic scribblers blog so people are going to read that and see the main thing about this show this podcast is uh, that it goes parallel with the blog so basically whatever you read over there you get a chance to come here and discuss right so yes. that is the main objective so the main thing you have to intrigue you have to share knowledge you have to devour thoughts so that is the main objective and i guess we had a great talk today we spoke about a lot Absolutely. and we spoke about we spoke about a lot of important things as well right mm -hmm. which i guess people of our age are not talking about right now <laughs> i guess what do you think like company what i guess it depends on your company yeah it it does but in general right youth nowadays or kids nowadays are more into other things mm -hmm. right so that this would be interesting this would be something new for the audience as well so and this is going to be our first episode so that's a great thing that we are done with first episode mm -hmm. so thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you russell for all this info. my pleasure my pleasure this ocean full of info that uh, even i'll take time to uh, you know consume so everything will be linked below and all of you can go follow the idyllic scribblers on instagram and you can subscribe to our channel on youtube and you can check our blog on idyllic scribblers.wordpress.com so you can check all of this out you can be a part of our community that's the best thing about this you can always be a part of our community all you have to do is message me i'm always open for that and you can also follow russell on his instagram can you just plug your instagram handle because i don't know uh, russell underscore fur r u s s e l l underscore f e r okay i'll i'll link that as well i'll link that as well don't worry everything will be downstairs uh, in the description so thank you so much for tuning in and that's it for today
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग और लिसनिंग